Good morning. Uh, this is Kevin Stoda on the um, Kevin Stoda channel. Um, hope you're having a good day. Um, I thought I would share with you a little bit about uh, from one recent article I have written and another one that somebody else had written. Um, the first topic is if I believed in a deep state, I think Trump has been a perfect tool or foil of a deep state. What do you think? Um, deep state is a noun in the Cambridge Dictionary, or excuse me, Oxford Dictionary. It's just defined as a body of people, typically influential members of government, agencies or the military believed to be involved in secret manipulations or control of government policy. The deep state and its policy of allowing extremist ideologies to flourish may be the actual issue of concern. That's an example sentence. After three years of Trump, who cannot claim that he is a creature very likely manipulated and empowered by the military industrial congressional alliance or complex, as um, uh, Eisenhower would say, uh, a complex which has sought huge increases in military spending and waste around the world every decade since the end of World War II. Uh, in a way, through his gung-ho efforts building a space trooper force, uh, Trump has put us on a trajectory to outspend China and everyone else in the space race. Just If you don't believe me, just look it up online. Uh, why is the deep state ready to dump Trump now? Well, the only reason that Trump as a tool of the deep state is slowly being dumped at this time is because Trump has achieved about all that can be achieved in three and a half years uh, on behalf of the so-called deep state. One, call it deep state one, there may be more than one, uh, named by Eisenhower as the military industrial congressional complex uh, without getting the U.S. into another major unwinnable war. In other words, despite all his... Uh, Bellacross threatening, he's not got us into another war. Um, and it's something that we hope he doesn't. Uh, and if they are going to have a space race, they need to uh, watch their spending. So, however, uh, Trump has alienated many of his supporters who thought that he actually would be fighting the deep state over the last three and a half years and see that more veterans come home from overseas engagements with less physical and psychological or moral injuries. Uh, in short, that's not been happening. By reversing the military creep over um, over recent decades, that was a promise he made in the election, but uh, he's going to lose all those voters. Um, certainly, Trump has also alienated numerous ex-generals and present officers across all branches of the armed forces through his firing of many of them or by asking them to leave office. Now that he is asking the DOD to take part in civil matters in the USA, uh, that means occupy cities, because he has totally bungled the COVID-19 pandemic response and he can't control his uh, tantrums, uh, the deep state would welcome a new tool in this coming decade, perhaps a Joe Biden whom they know so well. In any case, there is a fear that if Trump would reseat himself on the throne for four more years, that he could become more erratic and uncontrollable. He might even waste the remaining federal reserves needed to, in this time of pandemic, i.e. to be used to uphold the economy. Um, and so it might be easier to switch to somebody who will uh, be more subservient and uh, watch the cap on the Federal Reserve a bit as uh, the economy switches to space uh, wars. Only by reducing the inequity, inequality gap can the economy in the wake of the pandemic shocks find social and economic stability again. In, in case of any more social unrest, Trump might simply demand that more troops become involved in fighting that civil unrest at home instead of fighting or pretending to fight a land, ocean, air, and space race with China, or whatever new boogeyman is to be next nominated. Besides, to recover from Trump, uh, international foibles is going to take some time, and they need to get to work on it right away. In addition, uh, Trump's practice of not cooperating with other, other nations and leaders will hurt the planned expansion of military technologies, 
to the moon and to Mars or beyond or elsewhere. Such an expensive expansion into space requires more stability at home on planet Earth for the foreseeable decade or so. So that was an article written by myself. Uh, it's published in ESL Kevin's blog uh, yesterday, June 8th. I would like to share uh, part of an article that is uh, popular on my website right now. And this did not come from me. It's called The Rise and the Fall of Empires and Too Many Generals Spoil the Democracy. Uh, and this is uh, William Astor on All the President's General. Okay, uh, the article begins like this. In a sense, human history could be seen as the endless tale of rise and fall of empires. In the last century alone, uh, from the Habsburgs and Imperial Japan to Great Britain and the Soviet Union, the stage was crowded with such entities heading for the nearest exit. By 1991, with the implosion of the USSR, it seemed as if Earth's imperial history was more or less over. After all, only one great imperial power was left. The Russians were by then a shadow of their former Soviet self, and despite their nuclear arsenal, uh, were not on the rise. China was on the rise, but ever slowly back in the 90s. In military terms, at least, no, no more than a growing regional power. Uh, left essentially unchallenged was the, the United States, the last empire standing. Even though its people rejected the word imperial as a descriptive term uh, for their uh, exceptional country, uh, just as until oh so recently, they rejected the word nationalist for themselves. The world's sole superpower was visibly the only game in town. Its military, which already garrisoned much of the planet, was funded at levels no other country or even groups of countries could combine or could touch and had destructive capabilities beyond compare. And yet with the mightiest uh, military on the planet, the United States would never again win a significant war or conflict. Though its forces uh, would be quite capable of taking the island of Grenada or briefly invading Panama, in the conflicts that mattered, Korea and Vietnam victory would never come into sight, and it only got worse in the 21st century as the military fought an endless series of conflicts uh, across the great Middle East and Africa. In those years, it left in its wake a series of brutal sectarian struggles, ascendant terror movements, and failed or failing states. And yet, despite its stunning destructive power and its modest armed enemies, it was nowhere victorious. Never perhaps had an empire at, at its seeming height attempted to control more while winning less. The power of its economy was, of course, another matter. Now, its losing generals, under the circumstances there could be no other kind, are uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel William Astor, is pointing out, elevated to positions of power. The man doing so only recently derided their skills, claiming that we're talking about Trump, uh, claiming that American generalship had been reduced to rubble and was embarrassing for the country. At the moment, his chosen generals are preparing themselves to take over key civilian positions in the country, ever more powerful national security state, now essentially its fourth branch of government. And let's add this to one more curious aspect of the coming of, a, of age of Trump. A phenomenon until now restricted to the military and its distant war seems about to spread to what's left of the civilian part of the government. By the look of things, Trump's cabinet is being assembled along eerily familiar lines. Uh, remember, this is, uh, was just written a few years ago. Its members are unlikely to have the power to win despite the president-elect's deification of that concept, but they will indeed have an unprecedented power to destroy. They seem, in fact, to have been chosen largely for their desire to dismantle whatever agency or department will be in their care or to to undermine the major task it is to carry out as a government. Uh, for example, uh, Rick Perry from Texas recently was picked to head the Energy Department, an agency he previously wanted to eliminate. Uh, same thing for Scott Pruitt of the Environmental Protection, and then it was Betsy DeVos. Uh, this is how he started out, and he's been uh, Trump's been maintaining the government ever since. As our first declinist candidate, Donald Trump seems undetermined to ensure that 
you know, seems determined to ensure that the once sole superpower will join that endless human tale of failed empires. He's already working hard to make certain that its government will be allowed hollowed out or simply dynamited in the coming years, while his cubby of retired generals will undoubtedly do their damnedest to uh, create further havoc on planet Earth as they give new meaning to the latest American principle being put in place, military control over the military, and much else. Uh, this was an article, as I said, from uh, uh, 2016 when Trump was first taken over. And I don't think so, things have changed much. I would like to say that the declinist uh, approach is what uh, we've seen. We've seen an expansion in spending on the military, but we haven't seen an expansion on success. Uh, it looks like they're going to run chicken out of, of Afghanistan, but they're still leaving a lot of troops there. So again, I don't think people are going to be very much in support of Trump's uh, success unless he does a good job of media control. And of course he does. We have uh, already, uh, as I said, uh, other articles today uh, indicating that Trump is able to manipulate the media and he's got the largest uh, uh, propaganda force ever uh, put together behind him. But um, I don't know. I think that the military is seeing uh, Trump as, let's, let's replace him. He's replaceable. Uh, the thing will be for Trump to show that he's not replaceable. And I'm not sure if he can do that if the COVID uh, spike continues in his heartland. For example, here in Missouri, the uh, number of COVID-19 cases continues to go up. Um, despite the, you know, after the opening up, and I think they're going at the current rate, they will pass their early May, May uh, daily averages of cases, uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. And um, this will continue throughout the summer when it shouldn't, due to the push to open things up. I'm not sure uh, Trump's economy will recover uh, because there's so many people unemployed. Well, we pray for America and we pray that uh, things work out. But in the meantime, I want you to be aware of what's going on. And this is Kevin Stoda on the Kevin Stoda channel. Give us a thumbs up. Catch you later.